Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I continue uh, explaining um, what kind of um, elements and objects uh, we will be dealing with in solid geometry. We have covered uh, a few different objects before, like lines, planes, uh, cylindrical surfaces, prisms. Um, today's topic is cylinders. Um, so I will just explain what cylinders are, what um, kind of elements cylinders have, etc. I, I suggest you to uh, watch this lecture from unizor.com website because it has uh, side, side notes um, which basically can be used as a textbook. Alright, so this is an introductory to cylinders, just explaining what cylinders are. Basically, no properties, no theorems. Uh, will be discussed today. All right, so cylinders. Let's imagine that we have a plane. So this is the horizontal plane, that's how I draw it. And let's consider that on this horizontal plane I have a circle. Well, it looks like oval, but basically it's only because we are looking from a side. Now, let's consider we have another plane which is parallel to this one. So, this one will be called alpha and this one will be called beta. Now, we will consider a line D which is not parallel to these two. Now, I'm not really going into the details what is parallel planes and what is the parallel planes and lines, etc. These are topics which will be discussed in details. Right now, I'm just relying on your intuitive understanding that the planes are parallel if they do not have um, intersection, as well as plane and, uh, and, and the line, and the straight line. All right, so, now I have this straight line and I have this circle, let's call it C. It has a center, O, and it has a radius, let's say R. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to construct a cylindrical surface. We know what that actually is. Uh, I had the whole lecture uh, about what is a cylindrical surface. If you don't remember it, go back a couple of lectures where it's explained. So I'm going to construct a, a, a cylindrical surface using this circle as a directrix and this straight line as a genera generatrix, which basically means I will draw a line, straight line, through each point on the surface, uh, on, on this circle, parallel to D line. So, this line, this line, this line, this line, that's how it will be. Now, these lines will intercept um, the parallel plane B somewhere. And this would be the interception. Now, without uh, proof, I will actually prove it in the future, but right now I just wanted to say that without the proof, on that plane parallel to the alpha plane, my cylindrical surface will cut um, an another circle, which will be congruent to this one, so just different uh, center, O prime, but the same radius R. So if these lines are forming a cylindrical surface, then if this base is a circle, this base will also be a circle. So these are two base planes, these are two base circles. Now this is my side surface, and basically whatever these surfaces are forming is a cylinder. So a cylinder consists of cylindrical surface 
in between these two base parallel planes and two base circles. Let's call it bottom and top, something like this. They're base, base circles, top circle and bottom circle, top base and, and bottom base. So that's basically it. This is a cylinder. Now, to be more precise, this is a circular cylinder because this is a circle. Now, in theory, you can obviously consider a um, circular surface which is formed by directories which is not a circle but let's say an oval, ellipse, or parabola, or anything, basically. It will be still some kind of a cylinder in between these two planes. However, most likely we will not consider all these cases. Um, most likely all our uh, cylindrical experience will be uh, with the cylinders which are circular, which means the top and bottom bases are circles. Also, there is another important characteristic. Now, this line D, which is generatrix, um, I, I, I told it's not parallel to these two, pl <coughs> to <coughs> excuse me, to these two planes. However, one particular case when it's perpendicular is important because if these lines all are perpendicular, then we will call it a right cylinder. Well, in this case, right circular cylinder. Well, and let me tell you that in most of the cases. If I'm just saying cylinder, I will mean right, which means these are perpendicular to the plane, and circular, which means these are circles, cylinder. So I will just abbreviate the word cylinder. I will use in most of the cases, unless it's specifically um, uh, described. In most of the cases, when I'm saying cylinder, I will mean a right circular cylinder. Now. What else is important? Another terminology thing. This line from O to O prime is called an axis of the cylinder. Well, primarily because the cylinder can be considered as a result of rotation of this rectangle. Let's call this point A and this point A prime. So rectangle O, A, A prime, O prime. So if you will rotate it around O, O prime, it will actually um, make up a cylinder. In this case, obviously, right um, circular cylinder. Well, that's basically all I wanted to say. Let me just check. Oh yeah, one more terminology. If it's not a right uh, cylinder, when it's really like tilted, it's called oblique. And one of the examples, I mean, ob obviously very rough example, is the Tower of Pisa, which is kind of oblique. <laughs> it's tilted, right? Um, but again, I think we will rarely consider oblique cylinders. Most likely it will be right circular cylinders, which I will just call cylinders. Well, that's actually it. That's all my short introduction into um, an object called a cylinder, which we will consider in many details in, in the future lectures, which will be dedicated specifically to um, theorems and properties, characteristics of cylinders. So that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.